Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about something that I wouldn't normally talk about. However, dating internationally is now a big topic, so we're gonna get into it here. This Cuba place is a whole different ball game. Here we go. Just to be clear and direct, you do not have to pay to have a relationship with someone here in Cuba. This is not Colombia or Cartagena, Colombia or Parque Giras in Medellin or Sosua DR. This is Havana and in Havana, there are higher stakes than some pieces of paper that have value. Due to the economic situation here in Cuba, a lot of individuals simply want out. And the younger population, there are few avenues, few opportunities for them to get ahead, move forward, and be prosperous, economically speaking. Due to that grim reality, a lot of young Cubans actually are very much willing to pursue relationships with foreigners. So no, this is a matter that is very concerning because of course it's going to be a depopulation of Cuba over time, absolutely. However, in these relationships that are created, one must ask themselves, is it really genuine? There are numerous cases around the world where Cubans get married to a foreigner and things are going well for a couple months and then after a short amount of time there's a note on the fridge that states that the Cuban uh, spouse has gone elsewhere. But here's the thing. A lot of Canadian tourists, tourists from Europe that come to Cuba actually end up in Veradero. Veradero is a beach town in the next province over Matanzas province. Havana, when it comes to dating at least, is a bit of an untapped market. And folks, this is not the United States. You don't get on your, your, your little dating app. No Tinder, no Hinge, no Bumble or Grinder if you're into that. You simply go outside and you say hello. Okay, you gotta have old school game. And I'm telling you, here in Cuba, you don't need much game. You just need to show up, have a smile, offer someone a drink, and then it's a conversation. To be clear, speaking from personal experience, you can go from you know, ugly foreigner just walking down the street to a member of somebody's family within like a day and a half, okay? It's crazy. For the sake of not being too graphic or telling my business, I'm not gonna tell you exactly uh, what that situation entailed. However, I just want you guys to know that having a relationship here in Cuba is very easy. Anarchy is present in the Cuban dating market. This young lady is set to get married to a French dude. I literally had no idea. The problem is, is that you become an opportunity as opposed to just a dating partner. You are now looked at as a resource, as an avenue out of poverty. Now, there are some people who essentially hunt gringos, if you will. Hunt yumas. Yuma is actually the popular word for gringo um, foreigner here in Cuba. Uh, I want you guys to stay away from those folks who are coming after you, right? If anyone approaches you and, you know, they seem to be really friendly and they want to go out to this place or that place, I want you guys to shut that person down, okay? I'm speaking from personal experience here in Cuba. If someone is very friendly and they want to go this place with you, that place with you, be worried. Only talk to people who you pursue a conversation with. It just ends up working out better that way. Now, because the economic situation here in Cuba is rough, people will ask you to recharge their phone or top up their phone. They might even ask you to directly send money to them. Um, Use your own discretion. I'm not going to give you any guidance on that, but if that starts happening very frequently, I want you to, to just take caution with that. In the present day, there are a lot of men now, um, men from the States, Canada, UK, who are very open to and who are seeking relationships in other places. I want you guys to be very, very careful when you're seeking out relationships or having relationships here in Cuba. Okay, 
it can get ugly very quickly. Cuban partners can be extremely jealous, okay? Extremely jealous. Remember, for a lot of them, you are their opportunity um, or you are their window to the outside world. And because of that, they don't want anything to jeopardize that. They wanna be with you while you're in Cuba at all times. Okay, every bit of oxygen that you get, they have already had that bit of oxygen. Now, because Cuba is economically not so well off, you're not gonna see the pounds of makeup, you're not gonna see the surgeries, you're not gonna see the contouring, all that stuff. You're not gonna see even those really, really good weaves and so forth. The people here in Cuba are very natural. And because they don't have the money to engorge themselves with food like how we do in the States. A lot of the folks here are relatively slim. I tell you what, that marriage word is going to come up within your first week of a relationship with a Cuban person. It's scary for an American or for a Canadian, maybe even for a Brit, but it's the reality here. When it comes to these situations, I just want you guys to take caution, ten cuidado. Um, because it can go left. There are many different ways how the situation can go left. I actually would probably advise you against it, okay? When you're in Cuba, have fun, compartmentalize it, then go back home and do what you normally do. Be careful when you're out here having fun in Cuba, okay? Try your best not to get emotionally attached, okay? That's something that I struggle with, but I want you guys to be better than me. Now let's get into prices. A simple beach date in Miami can hit for over a hundred dollars. My first time here. So here Shout out to the beautiful and lovely Kata. In Cuba, at a government-owned restaurant, maybe seven dollars per person, and at a private restaurant in Havana, maybe thirty, thirty-five for two people. It can range depending on the restaurant, but El Biki is one of my favorites. Due to Americans not being allowed to come here for tourism, of course we have to check support for the Cuban people as a reason, but it's really closeted tourism. We have to stay in local homes owned by Cubans, not hotels owned by the government. You can't have a revolving door of people coming in and out. In many places, all right, you know what? I'm actually gonna blow the lid off of this thing. I'm sorry, gentlemen, I'm sorry. A lot of times, when guys go on vacation, I can't say a lot of the times, but sometimes when guys go on vacation in certain destinations, it is literally a rotating door of women coming in, women going out. Here in Cuba, they have certain so social norms, okay? They don't want you to engage in that sort of thing, so they'll tell you, hey, one girl is okay, nothing more than one girl. And in many cases, they'll check the ID of that young lady, they'll make her sign her signature, and that is your, your one allowance for the trip. How's never, there are some Airbnb hosts who are with the shits, essentially, and they will allow you to do whatever you want, they'll just tell you to be safe. But again, just understand that Cuban women are very jealous, and if you get caught while in the streets, there might be some consequences. To be honest, I'm actually hiding from certain places here in Havana because of that situation. But just to be clear, I'm no longer in the streets. I'm doing my best to be a good boy. Keenan Lambert is out of the streets, okay? Getting too old for this shit. Because of the wholesale misunderstanding about Americans being able to visit Cuba, a lot of Americans don't even know that we can get here. And because of that, it's kind of an untapped dating market. There are a lot of Americans who are saturating the dating market in certain cities in Colum of Colombia, saturating the dating market in the Dominican Republic. Here in Cuba, it is com a completely untapped market. And because of that reality, you can still find some genuine people who are interested in connection. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this little mini video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.